Alright guys, intermission time here. I'm at the library and I'm finally going to show you guys the backstory. Well, I should say Rosalina will show you the backstory. If you don't, uh, if you're not interested in the story, just skip this part. Uh, this, as I said, it's just intermission. She's just going to tell a little story here. And uh, it is chapter one, the Celestial Duel. Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day, this girl spotted a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. What is, what's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked the star child. I'm Luma, and I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet. She <clears throat> said the star child, who had been waiting day and night. Aw, oh, so cute. Don't worry, I'll wait with you, the little girl, girl promised Luma. I really like the artwork for this uh, little storybook thing here, I gotta say. At nightfall, a little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but she saw nothing. Hours turned into days and then years, but still, the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed and said to Luma, If we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But then, she had an idea. Why don't we go out there, <clears throat> go out there and find your mother ourselves? That is a good idea. Oh no, the Toad Brigade ship. The little girl and Luma fix up the rusty spaceship and then the two set sail into the starry sky. And this is how the search for the Celestial Mother began. I gotta say, how do those ships fly anyway? I mean, they, they don't, they're not aerodynamic or anything. Stop it! Oh, yes! Oh, excuse me, I'm just, never mind. Days passed with no sight of the comet or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended for as far as the eye could see. If I had known it was going to take this long, I would have picked more jam. Or pa picked more jam. Packed more jam, excuse me, said the little girl. About the rumble of her belly. Guess I shouldn't read that fast. <laughs> Before they left, she had packed all the essentials. Telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot flavored tea. I don't think those are all the essentials. I mean, uh, they, 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 they kind of forgot. Um, you know, th there are other toys, you know, and stuff like that. Those are completely essential. I forgot to bring water. Oh. Well, that's kind of essential. At this, Luma burst into gales of laughter, and the girl began to pout. At the, as long as I have starvets, I'll be fine, said Luma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing this. Oh, she's laughing. That's so nice. Luma continued to laugh, and the girl couldn't help but join in. All right, maybe just a nibble. Oh, yes! The butterfly net! I guess it was essential after all. Leaning far out of the ship, the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net. They almost fell, <clears throat> fell out a few times, but they kept on collecting. Which reminds me, how do they breathe in outer space? I don't know, but the star bits tasted like honey. The comets. A beam of light pierced through the ship's window, thinking it, was, thinking it was the morning sun. The girl peered through the window, only to find a turquoise blue comet shimmering at her. It looks like the very center of the spaceship, actually, if you ask me. The little girl shook at the <coughs> shook the sleeping Luma awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get that comet! Had to emphasize that caps lock there. The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Well, it couldn't be the center of the spaceship then, because it's made out of ice and not energy. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop, utterly unable to take another step. Look! <sighs> Peering down at the icy ground where Luma was pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits encased in ice. Pretty good, huh? Finding star bits is my specialty, said Luma, beaming. Oh, I need him as my friend. There's ice here, but it's so warm. I'll bet there's water here, too. The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued their search for Luma's mother. Chapter 4, The Dream. What is this? One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. 
What are you do- <clears throat> Where are you going? She asked her mother, retreating back. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you. Like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it rains and I can't see the sun or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have, <clears throat> you have star bits in your eyes, said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama, oh mama, ah. Okay, that was kind of bad of me right there. <laughs> the pair traveled through the starry skies, and through, <clears throat> they encountered many other comets. Not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was despondent. Now, now, Luma, the rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and gently, <clears throat> and said gently, I'll take care of you. With these words, she felt a small spark in her heart. Chapter 5, Home The kitchen will go here, and the library will go over there. The girl said busily to herself, We'll put the gate here. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, she's been bustling about at a feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it to make a happy home. That kitchen sure looks familiar over there, doesn't it? Hmm. It turned out that, the, that star bits weren't the only things buried in the ice. There were tools and furniture unlike they had ever seen, and the girl used them to build a home. Looking at the completed house, Luma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? With a library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate, it was certainly spacious, but still, something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said wistfully. Instead, the house was too large for its two small residents. Oh. And that night, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. That's a star bunny, by the way, in case you can't tell. Chapter 6, Friends. By the way, that's not the camera at an angle. That's actually the book's spine. You see that line in the middle? That's actually the way that the, the screen is... I mean, that's the way that they um, projected this storybook to lay out on the screen. Then one day, when the girl sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot-colored planet appeared in the horizon. From, <clears throat> from the planet, another Luma of the same color emerged. Do you two know each other? The girl asked the two Lumas gleefully. Wait, the same color? That doesn't look like the same color. One's yellow, one's like a peachish. <clears throat> Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed uneasy. But they do look like Lumas, they look like twins, but they're different colors, so the book lies! The two Lumas neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then one Luma broke the silence. My mama! At once, the apricot Luma parroted back. My mama, my mama! My mama, my mama! The two Lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, and neither showed any sign of stopping. The girl was so charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh, and that's when something very strange happened. Holy poopers! Suddenly, more Lumas began to pop off from the apricot planet. They were different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama! My mama! The sight of all the shouting Lumas only made the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all these children? The Lumas just, just stared blankly as she doubled over laughing. I guess I'll have to name each and every one of you. Well, she filled all the space on that planet, I guess. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming them all, she would begin moving all the Lumas into the new house. Chapter 7, The Telescope 
After seeing their hundredth comment, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still as blue as it was. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star bit. How strange. It's so far away, but it feels so close. What is this? She twisted the knob of the telescope, and the blue dot grew until she could make, a gra make out a grassy hill dotted with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Zooming even closer, a terrace on the hill came into view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. That sure looks like Peach's castle in the back, doesn't it? She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up that hill to look at the stars. She remembered how she and her brother would sled down that hill. She remembered having picnics with her mother on the hill on bright and windy days, and... I want to go home! I want to go home right now! The girls burst into tears, and the Lumas didn't know what to do. I want to go home! I want to go back to my house on the hill! I want to see my mother! The girl was shouting now, her face wet with tears. But I know she's not there. I knew all along that she wasn't out there in the sky, because... because... She's sleeping under the tree on the hill. The girl's cries echoed through the stars and a hush fell over the area. Do you know what that means? I do. It's kind of sad, actually. But I'll leave that up to you to figure out. Though usually quite cheery, one day the girl became sad again. Luma drew close and tried to comfort her. Mama, you still have me. And don't be sad about your mama, because she's a part of you. That means she's always close by. It's like me. I love star bits because they remind me of mama. No, no, the girl said, unable to stop the tears. Aww. A, lo a lonely look flickered across Luma's face, but it was soon replaced by a wide grin. I have an idea. I will transform into a comet, and a soaring comet that can carry you all on this journey. Whoa! With that... Luma trailing bands of white soared high into the sky and just as quickly started to plummet back down. Kaboom! Kablam! The, cl the ground shook and a bright light poured out of the crater that Luma had created. The bands of light twisted together to form a comet tail, and then uh, the Luma emerged, reborn as a comet. Whoa. The girl could scarcely believe her eyes, but how, she kept asking. Our destiny as Luma is to transform into different things, said a red Luma who had suddenly appeared. Stars, comets, planets, we can become all, all of these things. When I grow up, I don't want to become a star that makes someone special smile, said a green Luma. A blue Luma chimed in. That Luma turned into a real cutie of a comet, didn't he? Aww, look at all of them. Now all the Lumas together said, no more crying, Mama. Thank you, said the girl in the whisper. And, well... Thank you. And she pulled the Lumas close and hugged them. From that day on, star bits no longer fell from the girl's eyes. The comet set forth for the girl's home planet. It's a long tail blazing proudly behind it. Final chapter, family. Whoa, in the kitchen, with as many, with as many Lumas and telescopes, the comet was quite a sight to behold. The girl and the Lumas were proud to call it home. At a welcoming party for a new Luma, the girl gathered everyone in the kitchen and said in a louder voice than usual, All right, everyone, let's make a cake! A cake sprinkled with star bits! Then it'll be a star cake. The Lumas excitedly began to gather the ingredients. As she watched the Luma scurry about, the girl smiled and thought to herself, This is my family now, and I will stay with them until they're ready to leave the nest. And when they do leave, I'll see them off with a smile, because that's what makes a mother happiest. That night, when the girl lay down to sleep, a soft light enveloped her and reminded her of the blue planet she once called home. But it would be nice to return home once every hundred years to nap in my favorite sleeping nook. The comet carrying the Lumas and the girl continued on its journey to this very day, with more family members in tow than can be counted. It's said that the comet visits the girl home and planet once every hundred years, its proud white tail glittering in the sky. The End so that's basically another backstory to how uh, Princess Rosalina became uh, mama to the stars, so to speak. So that's a, that's it for the story. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, 
uh, side quest thingy, not side quest thing, uh, you can also explore the library, it's pretty vague actually, nothing more there, but you can also go back to the book here and read some chapters that you uh, read before, so uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this part, I'll see you later.